Breaking down these kind of barriers between each of the production departments is always a challenge, but data is the one way that you can help uh, unlock that potential and actually work more smoothly together in, a, in more of a cohesive um, way in order to produce the optimal plans uh, and change and change dynamically when required and flush that change through the whole business as quickly as you can. Welcome everyone. This is MTEX Accelerate. My name is Nikolai Shitikin and I have Jim Johnston with me. How are you doing, Jim? I'm doing really good, Nick. And you? Not too bad, not too bad. You know, it's been it's been a minute uh, since we recorded last episode of Accelerate. Uh, but I guess now after we're done uh, with our um, online holidays, uh, we can kick in uh, with, the, with the new chapter of our Accelerate shows. Yeah, it's great to be back. Great to be talking some tech and uh, data management systems and, and also some topical stuff that's going on in the industry. So looking forward to this one. How long have we been recording these things, Nick? Remind me now. Yeah, I think we've been we've been doing roughly three, three years now and wow. um, and uh, 50 episodes in. So it's, it's a it's a pretty big milestone for a small uh, show like ours. But, you know, it, I think we we're trying to play uh, a role, our small role in the industry and uh, bringing all the knowledge we have and sharing um, some insights on what's going on in the in the industry and in relation to the technology. And I think it, it's a good practice, um, you know, to look forward, but always kind of look back and see what we learned um, since you know, we, since we started, you know, like uh, we mentioned three years. So what happened last three years? So maybe let's discuss what kind of major challenges um, happened to the industry and how tech helped to get us out of it. Yeah, well, we've had a, a bit of a roller coaster the last three years. I'm not so sure, you know, and I've been in the industry for quite a long time, but I'm not so sure I can remember three dynamic years such as we've had with different shocks hitting the the, the the global economy, hitting the industry and the industry having to deal with that, you know, and come out the other end. So it's been a, a very dynamic three years. I mean, we started off with COVID. I mean, that's probably when we started doing this this, this podcast, uh, when we um, <clears throat> were looking for something to do in lockdown and things. And we then so started, started the podcast. So the first thing is obviously COVID was a tremendous shock to the industry and, and obviously globally changing buying habits, you know, closing down food service, changing more into retail sales, uh, just an incredibly dynamic period of time for the poultry industry. Yeah. And I remember how everyone just hit with it unexpectedly because nobody really thought there will be such a major uh, disturbance. Uh, but then when everything just kind of locked down, everybody had to stay um, inside or, you know, with the minimum travel and everything, everything just changed in, in one day. And I know that companies start uh, replanning their supply chains, making sure that they still can supply chickens, they still can get to the farms. And um, this is when many companies realized that technology can be a key to success over here because anything from quickly replanning to gathering information while remote it's it's all about technology it's all about mobile applications it's all about data management platforms it's all about supply chain planning anything and again that's that's all uh, technology if you run on paper in a period like that it's it's a disaster. It's just a really tough job to supply that information up and down and horizontally through the through the company. Yeah, I guess it, it really kind of showed the importance now of of being able to communicate and being in, in contact with your data and your, your systems from wherever you are, you know, and obviously home working was prevalent during that period. People had to have access to companies' data systems and be able to work remotely, be able to use Teams or Zoom or whatever other um, meeting platform um, was used to keep the business going while people were not allowed in offices and things. So, you know, that really tested a lot of companies, I think, during that period. And um, 
in terms of testing and challenging the visibility they create and their systems and accessibility and the real time nature of being able to stay in touch with your data. It's no longer it was no longer a success to have the best you know reports, but they're all a month old. You know you need to be you need to be in tune with what's happening today and, and take decisions based on what's happening today. Yeah, and I think the the other uh, big thing was that it just kind of uh, bridge that gap for many people, for many companies, uh, from their being um, far away from the technology. You know, so it used to be just like IT, accounting, maybe some analysts. They they would be dealing, or like management would be dealing with uh, um, computer technologies, with analytics, and all that. But when COVID hit, everybody had to get on their computers, on their laptops and be closer to technology. So people who never had a chance to have a like a Teams call or video call or whatever, they had to do it. They've been just forced. And I think right now, okay, so let's jump on a, on a quick Teams meeting or Zoom meeting or whatever it is. It's a normal thing. Three years ago, it was just like, okay, so how do, how do I do this? Do I have a link? Where do I get it? So I think even that already, it, it a big step, right? So that people not scared of the computers. I know it's it's kind of uh, you know ridiculous to say that people scared of the computers or technology in 2023, but there's still people like that, right? So okay, I'm I'm doing my my stuff on, on a daily basis. Why do I need to do something else? Yes, I have a phone. You know, I have a Facebook, but why do I need to get into the depths of how do I key in information with my laptop? How do I run a report? How do I connect to the server? How do I connect to the call? So I think that that helped a lot, you know, to bridge that gap with computer literacy in general. And then now it's much easier to to deal with everyone because it doesn't matter if it's a clerk in the office or if it's a manager or if it's a uh, person at the farm, they all can jump on the call, they all can connect, they all can share screen, they all can show you what's going on um, around, they can share a file, they can share the screen, so it's it's all now much easier. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It kind of pushed us to all get into it and the successful companies have been ma making a success. You know, out of adversity can come good things and I think that was one of the key learning points from that whole COVID two years or whatever it was, is that, you know, you need to use tech, you need that as a tool to help you run your business and and that that shouldn't go away that just because covid is now less of an issue um we need to embrace and and uh, and utilize these tools that we've learned about and and use them better into the future i mean that was a big issue covid but i mean gee on the back of that the poultry industry suffered really badly in the last year or two from from avian influenza and and h5n1 in particular which is which is literally all over the world and still causing major problems in many countries uh, today, you know, and here in the UK, we've still got outbreaks here in the end of summer. We've got lots of um, wild bird populations, uh, again, suffering. Uh, my walks when I get the time along the beach, I'm seeing a lot of dead uh, seabirds again this year, so it's still very prevalent. Um, I know that guys in Africa, South Africa particularly, struggling right now with, with another serious outbreak. Um, South America still bubbling away. So even influenza caused tremendous headache in the last year, 18 months, um, you know, in terms of importing a breeder stock and, and the availability of breeding stock and, and, you know, health and biosecurity requirements of various governments haven't necessarily made that an easy thing to do. So the supply chain has been significantly impacted. Um, you couldn't get breeding stock when you needed them to replenish your supply, for example which causes knock-on impacts in the in the production supply chain. So that's been a biggie uh, around the world in the last 18 months or so. Yeah, and it's it's been around for quite a while, but like last couple of years, it was especially hard and challenging because of the number of outbreaks and uh, how widespread they've been. But I guess that's also another example of where technology could help some of the companies to fight against it right because um, many 
uh, companies implemented new policies on biosecurity, on how they handle the birds. And um, even in some places, they, they had to stop free range because mm -hmm. simply because that that's just uh, been a big risk. Um, and that's that's what you got to do um, if, you know, the challenge appears, you need to change your practices. But again, um, remote monitoring and traceability and all of those things that can help you to localize where things are happening. Um, it's it's all comes from the tech again, from the data management, from uh, consolidated databases, from uh, the data that is fully traceable so that you can identify, okay, so I have an issue at this farm. So what are the other farms in the area? So, because I remember in, in some of the countries, they, they've been a bit ridiculous, to be honest, when they've been closing out the whole regions, there is one farm with a problem and they just close out, I don't know how, how many kilometers around it. Uh, when sometimes it, I understand, you know, it's uh, it's dangerous, but you know, you gotta you gotta understand what is the risk, and if you can really localize what's what's going on, then maybe you you can be a little bit more open because you know, okay, I have I have this problem, you know, if if it's if the same would be like, okay, I have a problem with an arm, okay, let's let's cut all the top top of the body, you know, <laughs> you know, this 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 is not <laughs> sustainable. Yeah. Yeah, it can be it can be quite quite strict, can't it? I mean, the problem is that we're rapidly trying to develop the vaccine tools, etc., to to combat it. But I mean, there's two angles. There's one you want to minimise people movements between farm, which then gets us back to creating visibility so that we can still manage the farm from afar, perhaps. So you need uh, to know what's happening on that site. Therefore, IoT and 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 good data systems um, is key. And then the other. Th Thing is the impact if you have the problem, you know, and it knocks out a breeder flock or whatever, it's the ability to actually then plan and forecast what's that impact going to be on the business? What's the correct way to to manage that production problem and and um, get about that, running different scenarios very quickly and, and planning. Um, so you, you have to be much better equipped um, with data and, you know, uh, real time data and the ability to run the various planning scenarios to look at what's the, the best way to deal with that. How do we minimize the impact on the overall business? Yeah, because that's the, I think this one of the like greatest points, Jim, because I remember when I was dealing with, with the planning, um, you know, always there is a question, okay, so what if we delay uh, pullet placement for one week, for two weeks? Okay, so how much will, you know, we'll, we'll have a, um, drop in the, in the egg production, and then we'll have a little spike in the egg production later on. So how that affects my egg bank, how that affects my uh, production for the broilers and so on. But then if you, if you start thinking about, okay, I need to cut several breeding flocks short, that's a huge impact, especially for smaller mm -hmm. farmers uh, like the, we have in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's big, and they need to quickly replan and understand what's going to happen to their, you know, forecast. What's they, you know, because that's egg projection, uh, that's their um, egg flow, that's their money flow, um, because they get paid by by eggs mm -hmm. um, in production. So that's that's big. That's very big. Um, and again, it all goes down to the end supply. And if you cannot, for example, supply from one region, so how do you make sure that you can supply in another region? So you will have to transport all of those eggs somewhere else or chicks or whatever you supply. Uh, and again, this is big question to sustainability, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. if you if you cutting one flock short, OK, so, you know, uh, you will produce uh, produce less, but then you will have all this additional cost and then you will have to do transportation, you, you need to produce more somewhere else. And maybe then you'll have some some other facility just standing still. So it's it's not good as well. Yeah, no, you, you touch on a good point because it's not just the production volumes, is it? It's actually the revenue generation ultimately when you sell your final product. It's uh, it's the MRP impact, you know, how does that change? How do we manage that? 
uh, in terms of vaccines, medication, all the various supplies we need, feed, raw materials. So the ability to 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 manage in a system that it's not just totally production focused, but gives you the opportunity to understand the financial impact of these various scenarios, um, um, both in terms of revenue and ultimately in terms of profitability. I mean, that's really, really important that, that, that it's linked and that gives you that visibility when you're evaluating what's the best actions to take to deal with this problem and, and what's the, the impact on the business. Yeah. I mean, I, I, um, <clears throat> I mean, one, one fantastic example of that that I was <laughs> I've been to South Africa a couple of times in the last in the last year, and boy, that industry struggling with load shedding. Which, uh, for those people listening who don't necessarily understand that terminology is, or haven't experienced it, is really outages of um, national grid electricity, where the whole grid is shut down for extended periods of time on a daily basis in South Africa. You know, six to eight hours a day, and maybe longer in some cases without electricity it means. That okay, we could probably survive on a farm. Most of them have generators, a hatchery even. But how do you manage? How do you manufacture feed? How do you slaughter birds? Uh, how do you process chickens? So, so they've been severely impacted by major shock to their supply chain from load shedding in, in the last year. Um, and of course, you don't suddenly improve that situation overnight. It's it's the lack of investment in infrastructure power generation over time, it's the extra pressures of a growing population um, and an, a, a growing economy over time. And, and then, you know, you find you're very, very short. And so it takes a while to build power stations to get back up to the total generating capacity. So companies have had to look at how do they keep, you know, how do they stay in business? How do they change their kill volumes? How do they flush that and inability to slaughter? back into broilers and then breeders, you know, in terms of volumes that require and totally change the shape and size of their business for a period of time. Yeah, it's like a major change, uh, like a, one of the major rules that changing in the game, you know, like whenever you you think about some of the resources that you have to manage, electricity usually is the one that you just have to pay for. You don't have to account for when you have it or you don't have it. You you think that you always have it. And I think um, that that also applies to many other things because we we saw in the recent years that there are major disturbances to the supply chain in terms of raw materials because um, some ports got closed even like during the COVID that started. Then we start seeing that the prices for the raw materials start going up. Then the prices for uh, electricity, gas, all other supplies start going up. And then it starts kind of snowballing throughout the, the industry. And that also was a, a big hit for, for everyone. And now we see the result of that in the consumer market when the prices for chicken or for other meat products or even like not only meat products all products are growing up yeah i mean that, that that's been massive massive shock to the to the industry over that period not just the poultry industry but generally food inflation and inflation in general has been skyrocketing in, in many many countries and and that's obviously impacted in different ways i mean you know in in, in western Europe, I guess, it's it's impacted potentially favorably on chicken volumes because people are trading down from higher cost red meat products into chicken, which which is helping the demand for that product. In in some parts of the world that you know are less well developed and their economies are not so strong. So in Africa, for example, people trade down from chicken to vegetable protein. So I mean, it's, it's, that's where they are. And and um that's caused significant problems in, in uh, African countries in terms of reduced demand for poultry products. And at the same time, they're coping with higher energy prices, higher grain prices, um, and, and less demand for the product. So liquidity has been an issue in lots of African countries in terms of the pressures on working capital. Um, and, and again, that, that's a dynamic situation that requires you to be very much in tune with your data and and the performance of your business and your cash flow and your sales 
and book, you know, selling prices, volumes. It's very dynamic and um, requires you to be really well tuned with uh, your data that's coming through the business. And not just yeah. production, but also finance and, and sales and forecasts and running all these different scenarios all the time. It's intense. Yeah, and like like you said, it's dynamic. I think that's the description of uh, what's going on because um, I don't know if it is really possible or even reasonable to do any long-term forecasts, right? Because we don't know at this point what and how will change, what kind of other problems might appear in, in the nearest future. So many companies just switching to the short and mid-term forecasts to ensure that they will be able to produce. Yes, of course, you have a plan, you have a, but now it is more of a goal than, than an actual plan because nobody knows if we if will ever realize. So that flexibility to react to changes, to quickly find a new supplier, to quickly uh, replan your placement schedule or your set plan or find another customer to sell chicks or eggs to, that's the key. But then of course, like we discussed, it's whole supply chain. If I'm changing placement schedule on the broilers, I need to change my purchasing of raw materials at the feed mill. So, and it's very long, long way, you know, from, from breeders to hatcheries to broilers. And if, if I'm changing something on one or the other end, it impacts everything. And then companies should always reproject, replan, reschedule. So now it's even harder. I know that in, in the past, uh, broiler scheduling was an intense job. Uh, when you start uh, planning slaughter, you plan your placements, everything. It's, it's a lot of coordination with the hatchery, with the catching crews, with the, with the teams that preparing houses, uh, with the you know, negotiations with the plant. But now, it's even worse. Now the market can change at any moment. Now, okay, so tomorrow uh, something changes and now we want a uh, small bird or we want medium bird or we don't want cut up, we do whole birds. And then your plan that you did today, you worked hard on it, it's, you know, it goes in the bin. Uh, you need yeah. to plan, you need to do something else. So, and again, yeah. if you cannot ensure that your communication and data flow is instant, um, you're in a trouble. Yeah, you've got, to, you've got to break down the silos, haven't you, between the different departments, and, and you, you've all got to be working together with the same information that flows from breeders through to pro processing plant and back the way in order to react and find the best fit. And um, breaking down these kind of barriers between each of the production departments is always a challenge, but data is the one way that you can help uh, unlock that potential and actually work more smoothly together in, a, in more of a cohesive um, way in order to produce the optimal plans uh, and change and change dynamically when required and flush that change through the whole business as quickly as you can. Yeah, yeah exactly. And I, I think we we discussed like last three years what's been happening is quite a lot. And, you know, it, it, <laughs> For any industry, and especially for the complex one like uh, poultry production and live animal production. So from COVID to avian influenza to supply chain challenges and pricing, um, I think tech plays a big role. Of course, people and good business practices um, is number one. But then, of course, all that can be supported by the, the right technology. So if you can ensure that the data is accessible, if you can ensure that you know it, it can be uh, entered in a timely manner, it can be linked and analyzed so that it is available for the planners. So, and the flexibility of running different scenarios, uh, getting data in the real time, and like you mentioned, breaking those silos, that can help a lot pretty much with any shock that can potentially happen. Yeah, absolutely right. And and I'm excited in many ways about new developments that I see and get exposed to around the world where the guys are investing significantly in technology and in, in, in new greenfield poultry operations. 
they they may not have a history in the poultry industry, but they see the opportunity to use technology to help them uh, take a, a leap and gain a competitive advantage against the, you know, the the the, the industry that players that are available and are around in that country. So really exciting that new projects are going really into IoT uh, and visibility on real time and what's going on in each of the houses and stuff and in the hatcheries and in each of the setters and hatchers in a hatchery and in the processing plant. There's a massive amount of opportunity and it's great to see new investments come in where they already are kitted out with the IoT capability. Now, yeah, they've got to train the people and we've got to build that capacity and the human capacity to use the solutions, but the fact that they see that as right up there as a priority to leverage their whole investment and their whole project is is exciting. It's good. So, hey, I mean, we, we talked a bit, we've been through a lot of difficulties, you know, before the three years, I used to have a bit of hair, but I mean, these three years and, uh, and the time <laughs> we've been through has been just incredible. And it's challenging everybody in the industry, but I think you've got to look at these things positively. You know, there are good things come out of adversity and, and the better companies and uh, are the ones that learn from these things and carry that learning through into their everyday business beyond that. You've got to build resilience. You've got to build flexibility. Um, and, and to do that, you know, we, we, we need to use the tools that are available for us. So the, the IoT solutions, um, the data management, the coordination between different departments and supply chain planning are all key. Um, and COVID has taught us that, um, as has uh, uh, the, the avian influenza outbreaks that we're seeing. Uh, it's, you've got to be more dynamic. You've got to be quicker on your feet to be able to have the right data to make the more often the right decisions for the business in terms of managing to, in some cases, survive and also then move to thriving as, as an organization. So good to talk about these issues uh, with you, Nick, and um, I look forward to the next episode and whatever we'll be talking about then. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Um, yes, it's it's great to be back, and we have a lot um, in in stock. So we, there are new episodes coming, and we have new interesting things and guests. So uh, please stay tuned for that. If you like this episode, please smash that like button and uh, follow us on social media. We are on LinkedIn, on Instagram, and Twitter. And see you in the next episode. See you next time.